Alex laid on his bed, eyes closed as his phone read him the headlines of the day. As usual, rumors of war and corrupt politicians' decisions ran the press, giving his day an extra layer of gray. Not that it would make a difference. He was in a rut, and he knew it. He had grit, but no ambition. It was what he hated most about himself at the moment. But he knew better than to dwell on it. Felix stood up and made his way over to the closet to get dressed for the day, fighting the sinking feeling and forcing himself to be productive. Grades don't earn themselves, after all. He picked out a black tie and fastened it around his neck. It had a lovely, vintage feel to it. You know, back in my day, we would have called you a hipster. Felix turned around to see his grandpa smiling at him from the doorframe. Grandfather, he exclaimed, you're back. How could I miss my boy dressing as his great-grandfather did? His grandpa stepped in looking over the small collection of cufflinks the boy had. Great-grandfather dressed like this. Every single day, whether he went to work or not. I'm not surprised. I'm sure a CEO needed to look sharp at all times. Oh, he was sharp all right, the old man laughed, in both dress and tongue. Did he have a temper? He... not in the way you're thinking of. My father was a man who struggled to show his love with kindness. He had a tough love mentality. Really? I can't believe it. And why's that? Because, Grandfather, Felix said, you're the nicest person I've ever met. His grandpa said nothing and chuckled as he ruffled his hair. Okay, kid. Thanks for the flattery, but you've never met Ladybug. Ladybug? That newspaper idol from half a century ago? She was more than a press idol. From what I can tell, it was all theatrics. Oh, my dear boy. I can assure you that her magic is real. You can't expect me to believe that. Felix grabbed his backpack from the cupboard and crouched down to tie his shoes. I can't deny what I've seen, Felix. He looked up in surprise. You met Ladybug? When? You could say we kind of fell into each other's lives. Felix rolled his eyes and left the room now pressed for time. He wouldn't be late for school, but he liked being at least 15 minutes early, not 10. It threw him off his routine. Don't forget about your lunch, he heard his mother call. As if. He was happy to stretch his legs outside as his bodyguard hurried to catch up with him. His grandfather used to tell him about being driven to school each day by his father's assistant, despite the school being a few blocks away. There had been times that his mother tried to suggest he be driven, but thankfully Grandpa shut that idea down whenever it came up. It was one of the many reasons why he loved his grandpa more than anyone else. greeted Miss Shields as he slid into his desk, ready to start the day. They had a biology test today, and he was sure he'd ace it, as usual. Felix didn't think himself particularly smart, but he did study enough to appear so. The room was quiet as his teacher left, leaving him alone inside. The other classmates wouldn't show up for at least another five minutes. He rummaged through his bag hoping to look over his notes one last time before class began. As Felix pulled out his binder, it got caught on something in his backpack. A rough tug helped him to pull it out, sending a wooden box clattering across his desk. What's this? He asked to no one in particular. Did his mom put it there? 
He reached out and grabbed it, bringing it to eye level for closer inspection. A wooden jewelry box? Must be vintage. Wood wasn't unbearably expensive, but it wasn't used much nowadays. He snapped it open to a silver ring inside. Huh. Also vintage. Was it his grandfather's? Felix took it out of the box and slipped it on, surprised by the perfect fit. Hey there! Felix looked around at the sound of someone's voice. Surprised he had company, but no one was there. Was he imagining things? Down here! He glanced down to see a black... blob with green eyes and cat ears staring up at him from the desk. He reached out and picked it up, surprised at the quality. Was this the personal assistant he saw advertised recently? How did it end up on his desk? You're well made. I don't see any seams, Felix said. I'm not a toy, the blob said, floating out of his grasp. You... You're flying? How curious. Well, I'm certainly not swimming. Do you have anything to eat? I have an apple. Why? That won't do. What about camembert? Cheese. My grandfather has some back home, but... Great! Let's go home! What? No. School's about to stop. Hey, Felix! He looked up to see Bridget walk in. That's unusual. Most days she was ten minutes late. Hi. How was your weekend? It wasn't anything spit. He cut himself off, realizing the floating blob from earlier wasn't in sight. Had he imagined it? Fallen asleep for a few minutes, perhaps? Mine wasn't too bad either. But I got my ears pierced. Look! She tucked some loose hair behind her ears to show off some dark colored studs that weren't there the last time they talked. Nice. Hey, do you want to get ice cream together after school today? Not particularly. We could go to the bookstore instead. I know you wanted to pick up some new study materials. No thanks. Bridget, going to the bookstore? She was a little spacehead that barely passed her classes. If anyone needed to study, it would be her. Then do you want to help me study for the English exam? You spent two years in London, so I'm sure you could give me a hand. He sighed grateful to see his other classmates walking in. Bridget was always trying to spend time with him and, although she was a nice girl, he simply had no interest. All right, class, Miss Shield said, bringing the attention to the front. Put away your things. It's time for your test. The class groaned and pulled out their devices, ready to download the questions. As Felix opened up his test, he felt his heart stop. It wasn't a biology test. It was history. The history test he thought they were taking at the end of the week and planned on studying for tonight. Talk about bad luck. He stood up and made his way over to the teacher's desk. What's wrong? Miss Shields whispered. I, uh, thought we were taking the biology test today, Felix said. The biology test? That's not for another two weeks, remember? We're combining this last unit with the next one. This was news to him, and he could tell that there was no getting out of taking this test. He returned to his desk, sighing, to earn a failing grade. History was not his strong suit.
The bell rang before he finished, and his classmates began making noise almost instantly as Felix rushed to finish the last few questions. There were still five more hours to get through before school was over, but he was ready for the day to end. The system locked him out, proof that he ran out of time, and flashed a score at him. Fifty-three percent. Great. He'd never gotten a score that low. He excused himself to the restroom, upset with himself over his memory. When did she say they'd have a history test? How had he missed this? It's part of the ring, kid, said the voice from earlier. Felix looked up to see the blob floating in front of him. What? And why were you hiding? You're the only one that's allowed to see me right now. As I was saying, bad luck comes with a job description. What are you talking about? Felix felt a ball of frustration growing in his chest. He usually didn't let his temper control him, but something about today was pushing him over the edge. Congratulations, kid. You're the next Cat Noir. He blinked for a moment, stunned, before bursting into laughter. Cat Noir? <laughs> you can't honestly expect me to believe. It's true, the blob said, cutting him off and rolling its eyes. Watch! It flew to the sink and dropped itself in, but instead of sitting on the surface, it floated right through it and swooped back up through the other side, leaving Felix gaping. You just... what? Magic is real, kid. No way. You're an illusion or something. I bet Jean is pranking me or something. You held me earlier. I'm solid. Now you're the next Cat Noir. I refuse. Felix didn't have to think about it. Even if the stories from half a century ago were true, he didn't want anything to do with it. It's too late, kid. You put on the ring. The ring? The ring! Well, I don't want it, he said, twisting to take it off. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? If you take it off, you'll have a lifetime of bad luck. Well, I've had bad luck the entire time I've won it, so... That's part of the job description. Trust me, the aftermath is much worse than you'd think if you don't fulfill your duties. Fulfill my duties? What, like be a hero or something? No thanks. Yes. Or kiss Ladybug. Ladybug? Your generation's Ladybug, that is. What is this, a cheesy romance? You wish, although sometimes Cat Noir ends up with Ladybug. I do not need frivolous feelings, Blob. Blob? Excuse you. First of all, my name's Plague. Second of all, I'm a Kwame that's existed for thousands of years. And third of all, where's my cheese? That's what you care about right now. Kid. I haven't eaten in half a century. Feed me. I have to get back to class. Feed me, or I'll change your test scores to something even lower. You can do that. I'm bad luck, remember? Who's to say I can't cause a glitch in the system? Felix was fairly certain the Kwame was bluffing, but he couldn't risk it. Okay, but if you take more than ten minutes to eat, I'll never feed you again. I have to be back before math class. We'll see about that, Plague said, smirking. He floated into his backpack and fell asleep almost immediately. Talk about lazy.
Less than five minutes later, Felix was standing in the kitchen, looking for the supply. Can I help you with something? His grandpa asked. You usually have camembert, don't you, grandfather? Usually, yes. Why? I wanted to try some. You always keep it in the kitchen, but I never see you eat it. Why is that? It reminds me of an old friend, that's all. He ate it at every meal, with extra despair at snack time. I suppose I keep it around for nostalgia's sake. An old friend? He was a spunky little devil, I'll tell you that. But we were friends. Even though he was a jerk, he used his bold choice of words to shape me into a better version of myself. What happened to him? I'm not sure. I lost contact with him at the end of high school. Oh. That's not what he expected to hear. He must have had quite the impact on his grandfather if he was still buying his favorite food half a century later. Here it is, his grandfather said, reaching into the back of the fridge and pulling out a small package. You're lucky this hasn't gone bad yet. It's about time to replace it after all. Thanks, Grandfather. Shouldn't you be at school? I... Felix hesitated. Don't worry about it, my boy, his grandpa said, ruffling his hair like he was four again. I used to play hooky back in my day as well. You... you did? That didn't suit the image he had of him. His grandfather was dignified, smart, and playful. He ran more businesses than Felix could count, and was always on time, so any delinquent behavior didn't seem to suit him. Yeah, it was thanks to that same camembert friend, actually. Really? Yeah, I guess you could say we had the luck of a black cat. Huh. I know you look down on such things, Felix, but I think it would do you well to have a friend like him. I'll pass, thanks. I'm serious. Someone like you would benefit from someone teaching them how to enjoy the smaller things in life. He sighed and stepped away. Thanks for the cheese, Grandfather. I'll be in my room. Hey, Plog, Felix said, chucking his backpack onto the bed. Wake up. Food's here. Food? Do you mean camembert? The Kwame asked, yawning as he floated out of the bag. Yeah, here you go. Felix opened the package, choking at the smell that wafted out. Ooh, yes! Before Felix could put it on the plate, Plag had swallowed the package's contents whole, giving a satisfied, smelly burp in return. Thanks, kid. Where's the rest of it? He said, patting his belly. You... Wow. Even though Felix was beginning to think this was all a long, extended dream, he was somewhat impressed with the creature's gluttony. I'll have to get some more. What about school? He stayed quiet for a moment before answering. Grandfather played hooky when he was my age, and he turned out to be the most successful businessman in his generation. Perhaps he's right. It will be healthy to have a little fun, don't you think? I have just the thing for you, then. What's that? He asked, watching a grin spread across Plague's face. Kid, I'm going to teach you how to become Cat Noir.